there is a lot of water in our atmosphere. But I'm thinking if the atmosphere, especially over water, is made up of zillions and zillions of tiny convex drops of water, then collectively perhaps they all combine to make one big convex lens, in which case it would act like a magnifying glass. Okay, so with that in mind, let's look up some websites dealing with the refraction of light. You might see a graphic, something like this, showing light bending downward, just like the weatherman guy said. And here's your typical graphic showing how uh, light rays entering some sort of medium, like in this case water, refraction causes the light to bend downward. Now we've all seen pictures of, you know, a pencil or something in a glass of water and how not only does refraction bend the image downward, it also magnifies it. So this is important now. And let's just go back and hear from the experts once again what's happening with the atmosphere. The science is the same of that of a lens. Here's a simple example. So if you're looking at at uh, Chicago here, just maybe you can, now you can just see the top of, mm -hmm. uh, of the Sears Tower and if our simulated uh, temperature inversion moves into place. Hopefully now you can see all of, pretty much all of yeah, Chicago, see all the lower buildings. Including, including what's at ground level. So the atmosphere really is like acting like a lens. Yes. Again, based on that imagery that I saw looking 46 miles across versus 0.6 miles across, uh, I really do believe, that just like the experts said, the globalist guys, these, these are people who believe in the globe now. They are the ones that said, hey, the atmosphere really is acting like a lens. And they put a lens in front of the camera to show how it works. So I'm, I'm just doing what they're doing. Uh, using the sheet right here, set the city up, a little cut out of the city. And now I've got the big magnifying glass sheet. Bring the camera right up to the lens. See, that's the normal view of the city. Now let's back up again. The science is the same of that of a lens. Here's a simple example. So if you're looking at, at uh, Chicago here, the atmosphere really is like acting like a lens. Yes. Atmosphere really is acting like a lens. And this is how much of the city is missing due to the lensing effect, the magnification uh, of the atmosphere. So thinking about all this and thinking about what I had just shown you regarding atmospheric lensing, magnification, refraction, all that with regard to cities and uh, objects at a distance on the land, I got to thinking, well, I wonder how this would work with the sun and moon. So this is what I came up with. I've got my magnifying sheet frame and I created a, a little stand uh, to paste the sun on it and keep it the same height over the flat surface of a table. So the sun is always going to be parallel with the surface. And uh, check this out. All right, here's the first test of a sun moving over a flat surface and with no atmospheric magnification it does what we might expect that it would. It gets smaller as it goes away from us. Alright, now let's see what happens when we add in our atmospheric magnification. Again, water and refraction. Water causes magnification and refraction, right? So let's bring the sun back. Oh, check this out. Refraction bends the light downward. <laughs> it made the sun set on a parallel surface. As it was moving parallel, the same height, the whole way over a flat surface, the refraction caused the sun to set. Not only that, well, let's uh, bring in the beginning of that little test and we see that it maintained pretty much the same size too and of course that's because as it's moving away the magnification is, is still uh, taking place and so even though the sun's further away than it was in the beginning of the test uh, the magnification basically preserved the same size and the refraction made it set of course again depending on how much moisture is in the air we could see that the sun doesn't appear to change in size at all as it goes down. We could see sometimes perhaps that it looks like it's getting bigger when it goes down. You ever see like a really big sunset or moon rise, moon set, you know, where one of them looks really large on the horizon? Well, that could be because there's lots of moisture in the air uh, causing that effect. Or when there's less moisture in the air, obviously, 
you won't have as much magnification taking place and so it looks smaller as it goes away. So it's all relative to the amount of moisture that's in the air. Now I'm just gonna put forward a crazy idea for you to think about and that is <laughs> if Rob Skiba could figure this out I'm just I'm, I'm just gonna go out on a limb here I think it it's quite possible that the creator of the cosmos could have figured out the same thing and engineered our beautiful sunsets thanks to all that water he placed in our atmosphere just something to think about